when you go to manscape.com and use the code dangle what do you get steven uh stuff to shave your balls you get 20 percent off and free shipping oh let's okay. go the steve dangle podcast powered by sports interaction want to bet Jesse Blake. Let's go! Steve, Eric Brandstrom of the Ottawa Senators today decided to do an AMA. On Reddit? On Reddit. On the Ottawa Senators Reddit. Eric Brandstrom, currently, right now, as we're recording, is doing an Ask Me Anything. Yeah? Yes. And I want to go through some of the questions and some of the answers. Okay. <laughs> this one in particular, I think you're going to love. Eric Branstrom, who grew yeah? up in Sweden, okay. no relation to the GTA, was asked, favorite team to play against? Eric Branstrom said, my favorite team to play against is Toronto. Always a good rivalry. I think Branstrom has been a part of maybe three Leaf Sens games. And it feels like he was always scratched during the All Canadian series. He loves it. He loves oh. beating the Leafs because everybody loves beating the Leafs. Is that what he said? No, no. no. The second oh, part. Oh, he oh. says he says favorite team to play against the Leafs, but it doesn't say he loves beating the Leafs. Uh, other answers to some questions: favorite city to play in? Vegas, Toronto, because he was drafted oh, okay. there. Yeah, that's that. Um, favorite player to play against? Toronto. Eric Carlson. <laughs> Yeah, I watched him growing up, and he's near. He's from where uh, I grew up. That's cool. Got that. Let me see. What's the biggest transition coming from Sweden to North America? Does the smaller rinks? Oh man, uh, you know what? Brave of him to be the twenty fifth hundred person to say that in an interview. <laughs> really favorite, appreciate that. Favorite part about Ottawa? What do you think he says? Uh, uh, Byward Market. He says, around the parliament is really nice. The history, the buildings. To walk around there is really nice. He's all he's done is walked around it. He hasn't been to that building not once. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> uh, here's another one. Can you describe the vibe in the dressing room with the boys? Eric writes, the whole uh, team is a tight group. Yeah. That's Revolution it? Revolutionary stuff here, Steve. Okay, knowing Reddit and how much Reddit likes to stir the pot, these are not the questions I expected someone in the Ottawa Senators to be getting. What is your game day routine? The answer to this one. Says, okay. Eat an apple. <laughs> Pre-game meal is pasta. Uh, pasta, chicken, and tomato pesto. I have oh. some salad. I try to nap for an hour or so. When I get to the rink, I have a cold shower and a coffee to get going. And then I warm up. You know, this isn't going to be good for my career, but I don't know if we need to interview any more of them. I think they're all, I think we've interviewed every hockey player. Like that's enough. We can just recycle the, the next time a guy makes his debut in the league, we can just lie and say we ask these questions and we can put in the same answers. We don't need to keep talking to these guys. We don't need to keep bugging them. Just leave them alone. Halib asked, what are your thoughts on poutine? Eric said, I've actually never had poutine. I'll have to try it. Okay. <laughs> this, is, this is aging me. This is making me like less excited for Christmas. Oh, he answered this really tough one. I'll break Which my nose side again. do you prefer to play? Right now, I'm most comfortable on the left in the defensive zone. But I like playing on the right side of the offensive zone. So both. <laughs> so, he said both sides. <laughs> so he answered what any defenseman who shoots left would answer. It's very cool. He said both sides. All right, I was, oh I'm going to refresh the page, see if he answered some more. Oh, uh, we don't need to do this. These are excellent. Just really out there. Really tough questions he's, he's answering. 
Uh, it doesn't seem like there's any more. I think those are the ones he's gotten to so far. Oh, how about this one? Who is your favorite hockey player growing up? And who is your favorite player now? Okay. He said, growing up, I played goalie in under 12. So hey! Like, there's something interesting. Hey! He okay. said he liked Henrik Lundqvist because he was hey! goalie. Hey! Yeah. Love that! Oh, you know what? No, we can talk to hockey players again. Amazing. Good job. <laughs> Brestrom's favorite players now are Eric Carlson Austin and Tori Matthews. Krug. Tori Austin. Krug. That's an interesting one. Tori, that's a. Hey, there's something. Did they? They would have never played together. That's an interesting one. Okay. He's a small guy, plays left. All right. How close is IKEA food in North America compared to IKEA food in Sweden? Kind of an interesting question. We're getting places. Okay. Eric wrote, it's actually pretty close. There's some differences, but not a whole lot. All right. All right. That is the second most intriguing answer <laughs> so far. <laughs> Out of all of that. Uh, uh, somebody asked, being from Sweden, to have Alfie around the organization, how's that feel? And he says, it's a huge, it's huge. He's a big part of Swedish hockey and the Ottawa Senators. Boo. He didn't really answer that. Boo. No, we could have so, ended at the last one. Yeah. No, I think, uh, I think that's it. Oh, how many times a game do you get, take a stick to the nose? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now you're speaking to me. He said four or five times. Damn. Seems like a lot. Yeah. For one Sounds game. painful. My right. nose actually started throbbing when you when you said that. <laughs> uh, last last one last one. We'll end on this. What do you get at Mister Shwarma? And Interesting. Wrote, yeah. See, we got okay. some questions. Eric wrote, "I actually haven't tried shawarma." Oh, shut up! <laughs> shut up! How many things did you read from that damn thing? And two of them are interesting. Honestly. You owe all of us. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Boo forever. I First of all, I was shocked the senators did this. Like, it's on our Ottawa senators and his branch so this is sitting is there. Today? It's live right now from 10 to 11. I, too, am surprised the Ottawa senators did an <laughs> AMA today of all days. If I were the Ottawa Senators, I might avoid this sort of thing for the foreseeable future. It's just, uh, I'm, I'm proud of Eric for putting himself out there, answering some really tough questions, and showing us a little bit of his personality. Guaranteed, they were like, this dude, no one is going to say less than this guy. <laughs> Throw him out there. Brady Kachuk, never heard of him. We need to hear from Eric Brandstrom. We need a guy to connect with the fans who's going to say absolutely nothing. Hell yeah. Who's who to both food related questions. His answer is going to be <laughs> haven't tried it except for the Ikea one, which is an unoriginal. You know what? Ah, ah, the Ikea as a theme is an unoriginal question but what is the difference between north america and sweet ah it's actually a good question it's a good question mm -hmm. i did like that one i did really like that one boo i wish he uh, he didn't even get into details about the foods you know no i know. wanted to know that he didn't even talk about the meatballs that's not such a gimme that's a toss-up eric <sighs> eric get type a little more next time we can have these one sentence answers so adam wilde is still sick Yes, it's just us, and I don't know about Wednesday. Like it might be the same same stuff going on here. Wednesday. I don't know. We're all battling. Mm -hmm. Like it's uh, you're a tiny bit sick. I got a cough. Yeah, I'm on the mend. But what I was saying before the show is, I've just been grumpy. I've been grumpy all week mm -hmm. because between being sick and my broken nose, I've just been. <sighs> Like breathing through my mouth. Like I've been breathing like a pug for friggin' over a week now. Because you broke and, your nose. And I'm just so thirsty all the time. I'm so frigging thirsty. 
because awful, awful, terrible way to be. Been getting just great sleeps, just really good sleeps. Great, good shit. <laughs> On Saturday. Elliot Friedman of Hockey Night in Canada reported that the Vancouver Canucks are willing to trade every single player on their roster, excluding Elias Pettersson. Everyone else is on the table to be traded. And Elliot made the point to say that this includes Quinn Hughes. He said the offer would have to be ginormous to trade Hughes, but Hughes is a tradable piece. And the Canucks that night, I don't know if you caught some of the games, Steve, after your stream, but they responded to this report by losing to the Jets 5-1 to one on Hockey Night in Canada. And I, that was without Pedersen, because he was out with a uh, non-COVID il- illness. So I, uh, I forgot about this, because I did tune in. Uh, I saw that it was, I think it was 5 nothing. When I went to go there and I and by the time I tuned in, it was five one. But I was just surveying the score and then surveying the the vibe in the crowd. And I said, you know what? This strikes me as a oh, there's Quinn Hughes right there. Hey, hello, there hello, Quinn Hughes on my wall. Uh, I go, you know what? This game strikes me as a jersey thrower. This is the sort of game where someone throws a jersey on the ice. And apparently within 30 seconds of me tweeting that, someone did. Oh, no. I, I didn't know it was that. I know the jersey was thrown. I didn't know it happened right after you tweeted it. It was. I don't know if it was right after or right before, but it must have been like as I was composing the tweet. Wow. Someone threw their jersey. And you can just tell. There's, there's several markets that are really bad for that. Uh, I'll say Toronto first. Toronto is really bad for that. Edmonton is really bad for that. And Vancouver is really bad for that. And uh, I mean, their fans are pissed off. Of course, they're pissed off. And like Patrick. Patrick Alvin, you could you couldn't have just sent an email like, (laughs) oh, yeah, everyone on our roster is shut up. That's that's what every desperate GM says. Mm -hmm. Every desperate GM. We're willing to trade everyone except for our uh, youngest, brightest player. Shut up. Sh- shut up. It, JT it, Miller, by the way, yeah. uh, who is my just favorite dude to pick on uh, on the Vancouver Canucks, but in part because I drafted him in fantasy to show you that I, I'm i not cheering against this player, but I'm starting to. On November 26th, he had a goal and an assist against Vegas. Followed by a two assist game, still good. One assist, no points, one assist, one assist, no points, no points, one assist, no points. He has not scored a goal, this $8 million player, since November 26th. Oh, wow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine games. Can he make it 10 tonight against St. Louis? Uh, not. This player isn't being talked about enough for how shocking he is. It's I think shocking. the whole the whole Canucks roster is they struggle mightily, especially at home. Like and and Brujo was talking after the game on Saturday because the Canucks going into that game versus Winnipeg just came off a great wo- win versus the Calgary Flames, who are also not doing the greatest right now. And he was talking about it and he says it's more frustrating watching our team sometimes when you can go from great to whatever tonight was. You try to build them up. You told them how good they played in Calgary, and we did an awful lot of good things. And then we come here, and it's not even the same team. It's hard to understand sometimes. And I feel like that's a huge vibe of the Canucks. It's so, they start off 0-7, they climb their way back to, I don't know, what are, how the close they get, two points out of a playoff spot, and then you never think they're actually going to do it because they start shitting the bed once again. And people need a long memory here. You need a long memory here. Oh, it sounds like Bruce Brudro doesn't have the answers. And isn't that the coach's job? It was the last coach's job. It was the last coach's job. It's the same thing with this team. But no, we're, we're going to trade the captain who's uh, on pace for like 60 goals. Yeah, he was and, the one in the 5-1. Yeah. And we're going to trade uh, Quinn Hughes 
even though we have OEL and Tyler Myers and uh, we're, well, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, you can't, you can't analyze this team. You don't know what they are. You don't know what they want to be. You don't know what they're going to be other than mediocre. Mm -hmm. Like unless they get a gift dropped into their laps uh, at, uh, at the draft, I really don't know what the future of this team is. Now and you're thinking all the uh, way to the draft. Well, that's what this is about. Like this year, there's no worse year to be in the position that the Canucks are. Are you or aren't you? Right? This is the Connor Bedard sweepstakes. The Chicago Blackhawks, who we'll talk about later in the show, are utterly shocking. This is the right year to be utterly shocking. This is not the right year to be the heartwarming story that the Arizona Coyotes are. <laughs> they are winning too many games. They are too fun to watch. <laughs> They're too fun to watch. They score too many goals. Their goalie makes too many saves. Too fun. You know what? The Ducks were in last place. They were in a great spot. Mm -hmm. They weren't getting any goaltending. And then both their goalies get hurt, and Lucas Dostal comes in. He wins back-to-back -back games, and all of a sudden, the Ducks are three points up on last. What? This kid's going to screw it up for everybody. <laughs> the Blackhawks have not hit 20 points. The stuff of legend. They were bad and they're getting worse. The stuff of legend. Listen, uh, I'm not here to tell you tanking always works or is always a good thing. Or we should all st strive to be the 2014-15 Buffalo Sabres. But... I, I wonder if Patrick Alvin is saying, listen, I'm willing to trade everything that's not tied down because we're not bad enough. Mm -hmm. Except we know that's not what he's saying. The Canucks want hockey trades. They think what we want trades where we think we can rip you off is all I hear there. We think we can get better through hockey trade. Oh, you think you're going to get a better player for your player and you're calling me to do it? Fuck off. Hang up. I, I don't know what the I don't know what the mission is, what the mission statement is with the Vancouver Canucks. Yeah, that's their biggest problem. They're unwilling to completely gut this organization. And there's some good pieces like they're saying, oh, you know, everybody's on the board except for Patterson. But it's either we need to tear it down completely. And because I don't I don't think there's is there an option to go for it? Like, what is the option to go for it with the Canucks? You you can't you don't move out these pieces and try and do this rebuild on the fly. I think we've we've seen enough that the pieces don't work and like there's enough young talent, but you need to gut it. Even gutting it, like even gutting it, I don't think is something the Canucks have to do. Here, I'm trying to bring up their cap friendly page. Again, I keep talking about all the parts they have that I like. $5.5 million, Bo Horvat, he's a UFA. I would try to keep him and move on from JT Miller, but since it doesn't seem like you're going to be able to do that, you trade him. Now, what do you trade him for to get the max out of the deal? Futures, correct. None of this hockey trade nonsense. Futures. Andre Kuzmenko, he's 26, he's a UFA. I would like to keep him if I'm the Canucks. I think you should try to keep him. Nils Hoaglander. There's an interesting one. Only 21 years old. I would like to keep him. You got a few guys who have a couple years left. Luke Shen, Kyle Burrows. Like, I don't think you need to reinvent the wheel here. Mm -hmm. Trade your UFAs except for maybe Kuzmenko. Get futures. And if you're really hell bent on getting better, uh, take those futures and flip them at the draft. Flip them for a player at the draft. There will be guys available. I don't think this is particularly hard, I guess, is what I'm trying to get at. And, you know, Oliver Ekman Larson, you're probably going to be hanging on to him forever. Tyler Myers, come the draft, there's going to be one year left of that guy. One year left at six million bucks. 
How much in actual money? Let's check it out. Six mil in actual money and a modified no trade. That kind of sucks. But you try. You try. For goodness sakes, you try. It just feels like they've tried nothing and they're all out of ideas. That's a that's a huge thing. Because like, yeah, you like uh, you like the collection of young talent, but the collection of young players aren't young enough for you to to have a full rebuild. You know, like when the Leafs were doing their rebuild here, Matthews was 20, Marner was 21, Nylander was 21, you know, like if the Pedersen's already 24, Besser's 25, Quinn Hughes is 23. It's not, they're not so young where you have this long runway to get them to 25. They're already there. They should be getting to their peak. So like, but if you're going to go in a direction, you have to go full scale into either direction. Either yeah. we're trying to win all out with these guys or we're tearing it completely down, which means get rid of everybody. Besser uh, reminds me of line A in that, you know, don't just stop putting your fans through this. Make the move or don't. Um, so he, there's another guy you can move on from potentially, and that could free up some room and just do something. Yeah. They haven't done anything. <laughs> Yeah, the collection of Do talent something. they have doesn't work, and they need a new collection of players, and they, they refuse to just shift the entire thing. I know who I'd trade, but everyone, JT Miller. <laughs> I just think so many other problems begin and end with him. But uh, on Saturday night too, they had Miller in the in the center spot, filling in for Patterson. It yeah. was uh, Kuzmenko and then Miller and Mikheyev. And the team had three shots on net in the first period. And then when it was uh, 3 nothing in the middle of the second, they had seven shots. And it was just the the amount of effort they're giving and the the chances they're trying to generate there is just non-existent. Like the team doesn't try on some given nights and they, they don't look like an NHL team at some points. Uh I don't know how you fix that. I don't know how you fix that without blowing it up. Mm-hmm. How do you, I mean, the obvious answer is fire the coach, but they've used that bullet. But was all, was Alvin the guy who used that bullet? I don't think he was. No, I don't. It was Jim Benning, so. right? Yeah. But, uh, Rutherford hired, uh, Boudreau. I think so. Listen, someone's got to make a decision here because all I know is they've done a whole lot of nothing and it's gotten them nowhere. Mm-hmm. Make a decision. Make a move, even if it ends up being a bad one. What are you going to do? Be bad? Do something. If there's anyone, if everyone on the Canucks roster is available and you are Kyle Dubas, Steve Dubas Dangle, who would you pluck from the roster? I get you one free pluck and you got to give me an asset that you think Vancouver would like. And then we'll go to you can bet that. Ah, uh, <laughs> okay. Well, uh, get one. Uh, I'm not going to do Bo Horvat because that's going to be too expensive. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Ha. Okay, I got two answers. Okay. So the cap's not a thing. We don't care about that. No. No. No cap. Okay. So Luke Shen is a guy I'd like to give up. Well, what kind of a draft pick are we talking? I've heard first. That's absurd. I'm not, I'm not doing that. For Luke Shen, I'd yeah. say I want a first. I want a first. I'm Patrick Alvin. Okay, I can't do that. Okay, well, you don't get him. What do you... What do you uh, hey, Pat, mm-hmm. since we're on a first-name basis, what are, what are you looking at for... Um, who's that kid? What, how do you say his name? Ilya Mikheyev? <laughs> Shut up. What? How do you? What? How much you want, Pat? You're not bringing. You're taking back Ilya Mikheyev. Why? Why not? You're bringing him back to Toronto. Two LW. Let's go. I want Aberjeezy. You want Nick Aberjeezy for Straight Ilya Mikheyev? Straight I'll up. Drive him to the airport myself. One for one. One Give for one. One for one. Drive him to Put the airport that, myself. Welcome back, pick. Ilya. Give me. Give me a fifth. You want Abrazizi and a fifth? I'll, get, I'll do both. I'll do both. <laughs> Thank you. I take that. Yeah. Tell you what, you get two. <laughs> two fifths? No, no. Two assets. You want two fifths? 
I'll give you Abrazizi and two of this for McCaff. <laughs> <laughs> if the cap is not a thing, that's what uh, I want. That's what you want. Ilya that's McCann what I want. back. Where, where's he playing? Second line uh, left wing? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. To give you an idea of how sick and out of it Adam Wilde is right now. What? It, what? He just sent Jesse and I a text. Hey, are you guys coming? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, good, no, Adam. We're in the middle of recording. All right. Um, we're going to get into You Can Bet That with Sports Interaction. We're going to bring on David Bastel, and then we're going to do a little Winnipeg Jets at Chicago Blackhawks talk after that. You can bet that with David Bastel. Brought to you by Sports Interaction. Get in the action and make a play. 19 plus. Please play responsibly. Sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. There's a section there called Dangles Doozies. And tomorrow night, the Toronto Maple Leafs play the Tampa Bay Lightning. And in those Dangles Doozies, we have a section called Ontario Born. We yes. bet on the, the GTHA boys coming into <laughs> Toronto and scoring goals. David, what do we have under Ontario Bourne for tomorrow? You know, it's funny because you look down some of these lineups and you're like, oh, a couple guys here, a couple guys here. But then when you look at Tampa Bay and, and maybe it's a Steven Stamkos thing that you always think, oh, there's so many Ontario Bourne players. But there's actually some pretty good quality when you look at it, right? Because you, you look at Corey Perry, uh, who, who's a very good player. Steven Stamkos, who is a Hall of Famer, uh, uh, which we call it Nicholas Paul, who I'm a big fan of, Steve. I, I, I actually think Nicholas Paul will be able to score. So we have this prop here, just yeah. like you talked about, where, you know, are you going to score on the Maple Leafs? Because you guys have kind of noted this better than most. Uh, Ontario Bowman players have this habit of coming to town and maybe recording a couple points for the uh, fans in the stands. Yeah, I just uh, went and clicked on Dangles Doozies, and I'm like, you know, why? What have I done? What have I done? I don't. Who, who are you taking out of those? Out of the four Ontario born, so it's Sorelli, Nick Paul, yes. Stamkos, and Corey Perry. Who you got, Steve? All of those guys have caused their own unique nightmares for the Maple Leafs too. <laughs> um, the most, the most. Um, Probably underrated one is Nick Paul, who scored both goals in uh, Game 7. I'm going to go with the hero of Game 6, though, uh, because he hasn't played very much this season, Anthony Sorelli. Yeah. Got to go for the captain of the Oshawa Generals. There you go. There you for, go. For me, I think it's so easy. I think Stammer, Stammer easily scores tomorrow night. You know, like <laughs> how, how does that guy who's been on fire all season not come into Toronto? It's true. Say like, hey, I didn't sign with you guys. Here's a goal. Against Adam, <laughs> yeah, and, and Adam, who's been who's been dumping on him for years and saying he's uh, washed up, and all he does is prove that uh, he's wrong. Who's worse than Adam? Say, say same section guys. They have uh, returningly former friends Zach Bogosian also scoring. Um, I'm not afraid of Zach Bogosian scoring. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but... You didn't, didn't see know. Jimmy Vesey get two? <laughs> that, that was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. No, it wasn't! <laughs> that was perfectly predictable, David! <laughs> so, okay. the, the odds are pretty good because the Zach Bogosian goal doesn't happen very often. No, Zach Bogosian goal happens as often as uh, Haley's Comet. So uh, you're, you're getting you're getting about five or six to one, somewhere around that range. Watch. Um, Watch. Yeah. <laughs> Watch. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're betting on Zach Bogosian, I see. Hey, well, I'm going to say no, but he's not going to score a goal. I know that's the lopsided, okay, of course he's not mm -hmm. going to, but eh, okay, well, we'll talk about this next time. I, I like that that there's the option to bet the no, you know, that yeah. you can get both sides of this. You know, if, if you don't believe that Bogosian is going to get a goal, you can just hit no. Yeah. You can bet that as well. Like, no, no. And, and of course, of course, the odds are favoring uh, the no, so you're not going to get a value proposition like you would with a BOGO goal or a Nick Paul goal uh, or, you know, a Sorelli goal, something of that nature. But eh, you never know, right? I'm placing the bet right now. Right now as we speak <laughs> on it. Bogosian. Two Five dollars. to one, Zach Bogosian <laughs> returns to Toronto. Revenge game for him. Yep. Scores against the league. 
There you, you go. You can find uh, Dago's doozies at sportsinteraction.com slash SGPN. Thank you, David. We will see you on Friday. Exclusively. Dangles doozies. You bet, guys. Talk to you later. Tis the season to deck those halls, shave those balls, and get them all shiny with Manscaped. You got to use Dangle. Promo code Dangle at manscaped.com. Get you 20% off and free shipping. Now, you know guys, that was, that was good. plenty of things that you can do, especially these are great stocking stuff. So, like, yeah. I'll reach behind me into my tickle trunk of manscapedness. Okay. Ah, the weed whacker. Okay, so the weed whacker is interesting because at a certain point, you reach an age where your nose hair gets longer than your nostril. And your ears. And your ears. And this is what the weed whacker is really good your for. Your mustache goes into your sinus. That's right. <laughs> people, people don't tell you that. You know what they call that? The thing in your ear? when it, 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 They oh. call them your little pussy willows. That's actually what they call them. A pussy willow. That's what my grandmother used to call them for my grandfather. She's like, your pussy willows are getting a little long there, dear. Let's retire that. I know. Like, <laughs> Let's retire it with the Manscaped <laughs> Weed Whacker. It's easy. And again, you got to go to manscaped.com. Uh-huh. Slash dangle or promo code dangle, whatever you want to do. And then you get 20% off for free shipping. Manscaped. Let's cure it, clear it up for the holidays, baby. Hey, so we have some experience with Shopify. Jesse? Yes! Tell us about it. Uh, stpnshop.ca is built on Shopify. Oh, so with Shopify, you're going to be able to customize your own online store, right, Jesse? Like ours. And discover new customers, right, Jesse? Like all the customers we have. And build the relationships you want to create with diehard fans, which we hope we've created with you. And it's funny because we, uh, uh, when Shopify came on as a partner, we were like, I didn't even know that Jesse had used Shopify as the platform. And then no. he's like, hey, did you know? Jesse doesn't tell us anything. No, he doesn't. Oh. He just does it. <laughs> Part of his charm. And thanks to their 24-7 <laughs> support and free on-demand business courses, Shopify is on your team every step of the way. So when you're ready to take your winning idea to the world, team up with Shopify, the commerce platform powering millions of businesses, including ours, down the street and around the globe. Try out Shopify for free and start selling anywhere. And if you want to sign up for a free trial, shopify.com slash SDP, all lowercase. We didn't even get a free trial. We just did it. <laughs> it <was laughs> Go to shopify.com slash SDP. You're getting a better deal than we did <laughs> to start selling online today. Again, shopify.com slash SDP. <laughs> Steve Dangle Podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Listen, uh, full disclosure, we are a uh, three guys that have all gone to therapy. Uh, we believe in it and we want you to check it out if you believe it's the right time for you. Now, the great thing about BetterHelp is you sign up and the great thing about uh, the Steve Dangle podcast listenership, first off, you're going to get a bit of a discount, which I'll get to in a second, but you're going to be able to go, you get matched with a therapist. And the great thing, like traditional therapy was you went, you talked to a therapist, you had to have good chemistry with them. Otherwise, you weren't going to get much done right. and you, uh, and, and you, you had to take time out of your day. And some people don't feel comfortable talking to a complete stranger in person. The great thing about BetterHelp is you can do it video, you can do it phone, you can do it on chat, uh, and you get let the match with somebody um, uh, very, very quickly. Like it's it's like within forty eight hours. So as I said before, you want to check this out, learn more, and save up to ten percent off of your first month at BetterHelp.com slash SDP. That's B E T T E R H E L P dot com slash SDP. As we mentioned, the Winnipeg Jets handed the vancouver canucks their lunch money on saturday sure but did. before that game there was a couple there was a couple sad notes for jets fans blake wheeler gonna be uh out for at least a month he went uh he went through surgery he undergone surgery underwent underwent there we go there you he go. underwent surgery on friday after he blocked a shot on thursday and then nate schmidt also in that thursday game He's going to be out four to six weeks with an upper body uh, injury. And the, the Jets have been like always a little, they're a little light on D already. So this doesn't really help losing Nate Schmidt. And uh, Blake Wheeler, who ha who's having a great season after being stripped of the captaincy, uh, is going to hurt the lineup a lot too. But like the Jets, they're one of the surprise teams. Like Rick Bonus has them playing really well. They're 20, 10, and 1. I believe they lost last night. Um, but they're playing playing really well. Rick Bonus has them playing great defense. Their penalty kill has gone from 29th in the league to fifth this that's year. That's big. Yeah, that's <laughs> huge. Like that's going to turn around your entire your entire uh, franchise. Like they they've been playing really well. I think they're in a position where like, hey, we can probably lock them into a playoff spot, considering how weak the central kind of looks in the bottom half. Like they're they're kind of good right now, and there's one thing I want to throw out to you, Steve Dangle, because I've been hearing a little bit of the chatter. 
It's bumbling under the surface. The better. And I think we're getting there. Yeah, there's there's been some good chat in this mm. in this ballpark here. Jonathan Taves. Oh, come where on is, now. Where is Jonathan Taves from? Winnipeg. Winnipeg, Manitoba. I think if this team really thinks they have the team that they have, and I think they're they've been good 31 games in. They're second in the central. They're one point back of the, the Dallas Stars with a game in hand. If they want to go for it this season, to bring in the hometown boy, have Shifley, PLD, Jonathan Taves, push Adam Lowry down to the fourth line, that center connection right there, that'll win you a couple rounds of the playoffs. Jonathan That's Taves. That's formidable. Jonathan Taves to the Winnipeg Jets. What do you think? I've heard dumber ideas. Um, listen, he's got to go somewhere, which isn't true, actually. He can <laughs> simply true. rot on the Chicago Blackhawks. Um, but that's a team that's getting a ton of saves. Um, saves and then taves. You know what I mean? Huh? Mm -hmm. um, he can make it even better for you. Um, I think it would take a lot of responsibility off of him. Uh, he has too much of a load to do everything on a team that is reprehensibly bad uh, in the Chicago Blackhawks. He goes from Peter Morazic to Connor Hellebuck, which I think is going to be pretty wild. Imagine Jonathan Taves pulling like third line duty on the Winnipeg Jets. Give him really specific roles. You ease him into the lineup. If you want, you can work him up. You know, I don't think Pierre Luc Dubois would would mind too much, but uh, for a team that has made defensive strides, to add a guy like Jonathan Taves, a work ethic and experience, um, and you know, local boy story. If you, if you want to go that far, you know, I, the the Jets haven't had an, uh, enough of those. Um, it's an interesting idea, and it's an idea that I think could potentially be done on the cheap because the Blackhawks are in an awful position um, because they have to retain half on a player making um, $10.5 million. You know, I don't really think they're in a position of, well, because we're retaining half, it's going to cost more for you in terms of assets. No, you're retaining half and you're still giving us a player who's what's, what's half of that five, Point seven five million dollars. Mm -hmm. I I I wonder what kind of assets the Jets would have to give up because that's fascinating to me. Five point two five. Five point two. Uh, yeah. Five point two. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you're right. Five point two five. Yeah, you're right. first, it felt wrong as I said it. <laughs> the first thing I did when I looked at this was, do they have their first round pick? Yes, and they do. The Winnipeg Jets do have their first round pick. Because I think that's kind of what it's going to cost for Jonathan Taves. I don't know if you're if you're the Blackhawks, if you're Kyle Davidson, you can't say we traded Jonathan Taves and we didn't get a first round pick back. If I'm Kevin Cheveldayoff, I do my absolute best to get it to be conditional. But if I'm Kevin Cheveldayoff, I'm like, oh, I want a cup with this guy. And now I'm starting to, I'm like, what, why make that connection? Now I'm like, why, why do all of these names feel like they know each other? Oh, oh, well, anyway, we know Shovel Day Off is a fan of Taves. Maybe he would be willing to do that. Didn't even think of that. Wasn't even on my radar. Yeah. Thinking, there's, there's your GM. You're going back to him. You know, if they're yeah. still buddies. The guy who ran the organization for all those cup years, bringing right. back the kid to Winnipeg, first round pick. I maybe it's not this year's first. Like maybe you you hold out because this draft is supposed to be so deep. Um, maybe you trade the twenty twenty four first round pick to Chicago. You get into trouble with that shit. Yeah, <laughs> you get into trouble trading your first uh, over a year ahead of time. You get into trouble with that shit. It's true. Uh, you know, maybe you put some sort of protection on it this year. 
Uh, if I'm the Jets, I'm willing to do a lot of things before I give up an unprotected first this year. I try to see how far down the road Vili Hainola gets me. The, you know, blue chip prospect who's unhappy in his situation. Um, there could be a match there. That's a that's a very good point. You know, like if if Hainola is doesn't have a long term fit in your organization because he's not happy, like there's a guy with still two years left on the ELC. He looks like he's going to be a good prospect, left handed defenseman. Send him over to Chicago. Why not? He's I mean, hey kid, you want playing time? Here's the worst organization in the tr- in the entire league right now. <laughs> Go for it. Do you know when Hainola played his first NHL game? He played it as an 18-year-old. 2019. Uh, yeah. He was he was drafted. I don't remember where, but it was in the first round. And he played straight out of whatever league he was drafted from. He played as an 18-year-old. And uh can't help but feel like that might have got his hopes up. Uh, because uh unfortunately. Uh, he's still not a regular NHL player, which I don't think anyone could have predicted given no. how he started in this league. Only two games this season with the Jets, 13 down in the AHL with the Manitoba, Manitoba Moose, but like he's just bounced around everywhere since being drafted. First round, uh, 20th overall. Dude, eight games as an 18 year old defenseman picked 20th overall. One goal forces five points. Five and eight. Ah. Ah. And then uh, he add him to the list. So many players drafted in that friggin' draft in the 2019 draft got so screwed by COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, and he ends up playing in three different leagues uh, in the 2020, 2021 season. Plays in Finland, plays with the Jets, plays in, with the Moose. He's he's playing all over the place. We in Nick Robertson in Toronto, who wasn't drafted too far after Heinola. Uh, he was within a round, anyway, of Heinola. Um, there, there's lots of players from those like the 2018, the 2019, and the 2020 drafts who their development's just screwed. Just screwed. Like, I, I keep bringing it back to the Leafs, but they have a guy named Ty Voigt who was drafted after having not played hockey for a year. Mm-hmm. That's part of the reason he slid that far, is he was supposed to go higher than that, but then no one took him because he didn't play. He didn't play. Hainola was unfortunate to have already been drafted and then gotten this taste and then had it taken away from him there's if if covid never happens he's a regular nhl or a couple years ago but if ifs and buts right i don't think any of us wish that happened but no yeah no it's uh nick robertson's one of the best examples of that a guy whose career has just been completely yo-yoed and derailed by by covid and just the situation and then now it's even worse because uh is it because of his injury? Yeah. Yeah. Hainola and Robertson. Robertson, maybe the poster boy up front, and Hainola, maybe the poster boy in the back end. Best supporting actor. Yeah. Just <laughs> most screwed. How about that? <laughs> just most screwed. Most uh, openly unhappy about it, too. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's weird in Winnipeg where they've had, they have a long or a short history of players being openly unhappy. I don't, I don't understand why guys are so vocal about being unhappy in Winnipeg, but you know, from Line A to Dubois to Hainola, they they love being unhappy openly in Winnipeg. Ah, uh, I hope the kid is surrounded by the right people because I like I understand. I think all of us can empathize in some way, shape, or form, uh, thinking your life is going to go a certain way. And then it, you know, completely gets taken away from you. I'm trying to look it up right now. He does have another year left on his ELC. So he's probably grumpy because he thinks his ELC should be done by now. Um, it slid. Yeah, it slid. But also, 
if I'm Heinola, I'm like, dude, I should have been in the NHL full time two, three years ago. Uh, I should be at the end of my contract. I should be a regular top four D in this league. And I should be asking you for at least 3 million bucks a year. I should be asking you for like a $10 million contract. Yep. And like now I'm, now I'm looking at my contract going, all right, what's my QO? It's it's cra- he has a five year ELC. Yeah, man, that's insane. I'd be, whew, I wouldn't be the best in that situation either. Where's the NHLPA on that? Right. Oh, the NHLPA on anything is they're non-existent. Yeah, where's the NHL? Oh, on just doing nothing. <laughs> Speaking of the Blackhawks, uh, Taves and Kane, they played a thousand games together uh, in their game versus the. Uh, New York Rangers at Madison Square Garden and um, lost seven nothing. No seven one <laughs> seven one seven one. It was actually at home. I don't think it was at uh, MSG. And during that game, there was a couple interesting things that happened because Jacob Truba and Andreas Anathisiu keep going back and forth. Yep. And uh, Truba scored a goal. And if you remember, if you don't remember, Truba hit Andreas. Uh, you know, it was a clean hit. I think, you know, it was it was a hard hit, and I thought uh, he left his feet, but a little bit. But you know, it was a hard hit. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Andreas chirped uh Truba by saying uh he's an eight million dollar guy with zero goals, and Truba responded last game by scoring a goal and then asking Andreas if he wanted it, uh, if he wanted the puck, which is. <laughs> amazing amazing like listen you don't have to like jacob truba i don't care that's hilarious and truba has done a great job rewriting his own story because dude looks silly got the big contract he was just named captain doesn't have a goal looks ridiculous I think he got kicked out of a game and he went to throw his helmet down the tunnel completely missed and threw it into the boards since that tantrum and grav is all over this on his twitter if i'm not mistaken the rangers are seven and oh they have not lost and truba has scored twice that's a team on the up jesse blake you know maybe you knew something that we didn't (laughs) you know maybe you know jesse's Jesse's a rink rat, right? He, Jesse's watching the all the obscure games. Um, and he was watching some hockey during this more unknown tournament that mo- most of you casuals haven't seen before called the Eastern Conference Final. And he saw this team called the New York Rangers that he thought, you know what? I see something here. I think these guys can be special. That's, it's, it's what I said. They played this underrated team called Tampa Bay. Uh, they they play in the league called the NHL, and they looked really good versus them. And I think the New York Rangers have something going for them. Absolutely. It's six in a row, by the way, not seven. You know okay. what? You're you're Mark Hunter. You're just a rink rat. You, you live it. You love it. It is seven. My bad. Is it seven? It's seven. It's seven. I just counted it again. Uh, their last loss came to Athanasiu and the Blackhawks a couple weeks ago. Oh, so there you go. It's the revenge game. Uh, and you had a couple things to say about the Blackhawks. Yeah, of man. How shambolic they are. Well, just they're they're doing the thing properly. I mean, there's there's been a, a few clips recently that made me realize how unbelievably fortunate. We are to be done with the Peter Morazic era uh, in Toronto. That's one of Kyle Dubas's greatest mistakes. It's it's one of his worst signings and best trades. Um, like the Leafs getting rid of that guy, multiple years of that guy, might I add, cost thirteen spots in the draft. And the guy the Leafs drafted with uh, their second rounder who they got from the Chicago Blackhawks, I believe is like top five in major junior scoring. Oh, no. This this year in Fraser Minton. Uh, Let me, let me look. Well, 
Anyway, it doesn't matter. He's having a very good season. I do know that much. But part of me couldn't help but be a little overjoyed when they were like, you know what? It's a special game. We're going to put Kane and Taves together on a line like old times. And we're going to put them with a really good forward here. So someone get our best winger, Sam Lafferty. I'll take it. (laughs) So they put Kane and Taves with Sam Lafferty and they proceed to get the crap kicked out of them. Seven one in Madison square garden. And I got to say like, you know, we, we did talk about it in the jets discussion. A uh, part of me, listen, at the end of the day, the Blackhawks are doing the correct thing right now. Um, they are rebuilding the way you rebuild when a player like Connor Bedard is available by being really bad. Buffalo wasn't able to recruit players. I think Chicago will be able to. Right? There's not a lot of players I've ever heard of that have Chicago on their no trade list. They want to play there. Great city, great fans. I've never been, but you can tell the fans are are great. It's not a shot of Buffalo, you know, but you always hear that story about Canada. You hear a little bit of it with California. There's the taxes, but also it's permanently summer and you take the good with the bad. Buffalo struggles. Chicago, not quite as much, even though their weather sucks too. Mm -hmm. They're able to draw players. But part of me, from the way this season started and just the, the many stories we've had to talk about with the Chicago Blackhawks, I cannot help that I kind of enjoy watching them lose right now. I do. Um, and it's not about the players on, on the roster. Well, yeah, it is. It's a little bit about some of the players on the roster. Um, you know, it's not about, I can tell you, it's not about the goalie. None of the defensemen that I can think of, but the, the ghosts of 2010 still linger. Um, and I can't help but revel in them getting the crap kicked out of them. And good on Blackhawks fans because a lot of them are just kind of taking their lumps and they're not happy with this team either. Um, the way this probably ends is they finish last. They get at least the fourth overall pick in a really, really good draft and a team that has been a financial might in the NHL for a long time uh, will slowly begin their return to the top, right? We'll see how smart this management group is and how they're able to rebuild. But right now, yeah, kind of looks good on them. One thing before the season that I said was that Kyle Davidson is doing a great job because if you're going to tear something down, you do it to the bone, and you really suck. And the Blackhawks right now are the best at sucking in the year where you want to suck the hardest. So I think that's a credit to Davidson in that he's going to get rid of Taves and Kane hopefully here by the end of the season, get some more assets. And trading pieces like Kirby Doc, that was always the right move. Getting a goaltender who's not a good goaltender and has an 872 save percentage is the best move you can make in Peter, per- Peter Mrazek. So... If their goal is to try and get Bedard, they're doing the best at it. They're going to have the best odds by the end of the season if this all keeps up. Kane, Taves, Athanasiu, Domi. Um, I'll skip over Jujar Kara, but Caleb Jones, Jack Johnson, Ian Mitchell, Jared Tenorti. Those are all guys on expiring deals, UFAs and RFAs who the Blackhawks are probably going to pitch out there. And the reason I threw the RFAs in with the UFAs is it really doesn't matter who you are. Like the Blackhawks traded away Kirby Doc, Alex DeBrinkett, 
And who was the other? Uh, Brandon Hagel. Hagel, like, yeah. It's all lighter. guys under 25. Mm-hmm. They were like, whatever. Don't care. Throw him out there. Anybody who's going to maybe help us win a game, we don't want him. Help us win a game. Oof, get out of here. <laughs> and I think they could be one of those teams that surprise, not necessarily next year, but in relatively short order, because uh, the the teams that catch you off guard, the teams that improve the quickest are the teams that have absolutely no goaltending um, that go to having it. Mm-hmm. They can have league average goaltending next year and be a completely different team. Because right now they got Peter Morazic and Arvid Soderblom. I am not very familiar with Arvid. Me neither. So <laughs> I guess that's a good thing for the Blackhawks because they're trying to lose. It's the easiest way to be bad. It's it's what sets the bad teams apart from the utterly crap. Right? Look at the Coyotes. They're not doing it right. They tore it all down. You look at the roster. You're like, I don't know who half these people are. You know the goalie. You know both goalies. They're not doing it right. Not Corel- doing it right. Your goaltending's too good. Corel Vabelka in Arizona has been very good. He is and- the anti-Bedard. Oh, yeah. And that's a bad thing for them. But yeah, and 9-11 on the year for Vimelka. Well, it's decent. For, uh, especially with a, with a decor that's nothing to write home about. I Man, someone from the Coyotes, someone from the NHL needs to go up to Vimelka with a briefcase full of $10 million and just open it in front of him and be like, we're really sorry about your knee. And Vimelka goes, ah, oh, my knee. Oh, there's a clinic in um, Belize I need to go to. I need to visit this clinic located on the beach in Belize. Like, he just needs to go away. He just needs to stop being the goalie for the Coyotes for a while. Why Belize? I don't know. I was trying to think of tropical places. You can tell I've never been. (laughs) It was like, that's something you've never been even near. (laughs) No, Belize, Bermuda. I could have said Grenada or Trinidad. You could have. Yeah. My homelands. I could have. I could have. Yeah. Oh, Corel, don't you just need to go to Trinidad and wear those sunglasses that go over the top of your head like the track and field team? Don't don't you just need that? Otto Bolden? You remember those? Yeah. I When those guys were running track, me and the St. Brendan's Blazers, my elementary school's track team, we all wanted to have Team Trinidad sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> and we could never find them. You can never find them. But I, I think Corel Vimelka needs to try on some of those sunglasses. Could someone please Photoshop that? Because the Coyotes are just, they're not bad enough. He, think, he makes them way too competitive. I think uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that this is the first uh, Trinidad track and field auto Bolden reference on a hockey podcast in history. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Those Maybe. guys on the Yahoo pod. They get they get pretty out there too, so maybe not. They do, yeah, they do. I could definitely see Avery bringing that up. Yeah, uh, no, and Avery's everyone goes, Avery, up. why'd you bring that up? Yeah. <laughs> Avery's like, I don't know. Here's my nice hat. I don't. Here's my hat. Here's my. <laughs> it's one of many that I own. Yeah. Hey, if you think you know which way it's going to go, you got to make your bet at Sports Interaction. We've got you covered. Pre-game, live betting on all major sports and prop bets. If you want to bet, SportsInteraction.com/sdpn. 19 plus, please play responsibly. Fellas, do you lack confidence sometimes in the bedroom? Listen, everybody has those nights where you get a little too nervous and maybe you had too much to drink and there's not much worse than not being able to stick shift the drive. Do you know what I'm saying? What? Adam. <laughs> what? There's Adam. much better ways. You could have Is there? I think you got my meaning. So that tells me that's the best way. Rex MD is here to spread cheer even... Uh, when you've had too many beers. RexMD is FDA improved and the most trusted leader in men's telehealth. RexMD makes 
getting generic and branded Viagra or Cialis easy. Everything's online. Even with their prescription, they deliver it discreetly to your door. There's no waiting rooms, no embarrassing trips to the doctor, no insurance, and no copays. Take advantage of the best deal they've ever offered and save up to 90% and only pay $2 per dosage fees uh, with our exclusive link. Go to rexmd.com slash the athletic for this limited time deal. Tomorrow night, the Leafs play the Lightning. Steven, what do you expect out of that game? I hope it is a really hard fought game and competitive and it'd be nice to see the Leafs come out on top, but I, I hope it is a one goal game that is a vicious bloodbath. Odds are it will not be. Um, and I know what I said in my LFR. I want the Leafs to finish strong. They deserve to feel good heading into the Christmas break. They've been incredible, right? You got Tampa Bay. Any win against them is a good one. I don't care if you got outshot 50 to 10. Any win against them is a good one. And then you get the Philadelphia Flyers in an afternoon game at home. That is a game specifically designed for you to kick their ass in front of children. Right? That's exactly what that game is designed for. I've been to one of those friggin' sacrifices, yeah. those ritual sacrifices where the Leafs beat the Hurricanes, I think it was 8-1, mm -hmm. in front of a bunch of screaming children because it's an afternoon game. All the kids were chanting, more blood, more blood, and that's exactly what they got. 8-1. They, they killed them. That's what those games are designed to be. Here's how it's more realistically going to go. Mm -hmm. Tampa just wants to get to Christmas. They're a playoff team. I don't think they believe in these December regular season statements. And part of me can't help but think that the Leafs might be feeling the same way. So it might be a bit pedestrian. It could be, but I hope it is the vicious rivalry that we all deserve to watch. Is if the Leafs lose three games in a row, I'm of the opinion that there's enough goodwill here. I think I've said this a couple times throughout uh, November and uh, a little bit into December, the Mitch Marner streak, the 15 game point streak, that if even if they lose three game losing streak, it's okay. No panic time. So, Steve, yes, three-game losing streak. It's an awful loss. They look like they can't keep up. Panic again? No, I'll chalk it up, too. They, listen, uh, my wife's a teacher, and she sees it. The kids don't care. <laughs> the kids are not in the, in the school frame of mind right now. They are not going to uh, an institution of learning. They are going to an institution of where's Santa? Give us Santa. That's that's all they're thinking. Oh, they're bloodthirsty. These kids. Give us Santa. And um, that's that's all they got their minds on right now. That's all a lot of us got our minds on right now. Uh, it's hard to, you know, you're you're dialed in, and you're th and you're thinking about how you're going to go into the corners with Corey Perry and, and you're going to battle Patrick Maroon and keep him from the front of your net. And then you walk into the lobby. Well, the weather outside is frightful. And it's, it's hard to be in that mindset. So even if they go on a four game skid heading into Christmas, I think the, the vibes should still be immaculate. It's after where, if they continue the losing yes after a little bit of a reset and with a softer schedule mm -hmm. i'm gonna be a little upset so they, they still got some time but here's what i mean by softer schedule let me let me pull it up yeah because we were talking before about how jam-packed the beginning of their season was yeah, it's really, really, really jam-packed beginning of the season. So many back-to-backs, way too many. December, they don't have a single one. Uh, then they come out of the break against the Blues. It is on the road, though, so I should say it's a road trip they come out of the break with. That's not fun. St. Louis, Arizona, Colorado. Yes, they're all on the road. Yes, they're all winnable. 
though. Colorado's banged up. Then they have a three-game homestand. St. Louis again. Seattle's been great. And then Detroit. And you have one back-to-back in the entire month of January. One. And it's a... You you get a home game against Nashville, and then you take a light skip over to Detroit. Right. The the Leafs are... They're going to make the playoffs like we're all kind of in agreement the, the way they're playing and how they started and their, their good little run here. They couldn't make the playoffs. But like those January dates, that's where you solidify it. That's yeah. where you come out of January going into February saying, OK, we're comfy in the two seed wherever we are, but we're a playoff team. And now it's just about improving where we are in the standings. Maybe we can get the one seed in the division, whatever it is. But like coming out of that January little stretch there, they need to be like comfy and just riding towards the playoffs. Uh, the conversation needs to be all right. So who's the big acquisition? Yep. Yeah. The, how do we, it feels like too often heading into the trade deadline, we're talking about what this team needs and not about what this team wants. You know what I mean? There shouldn't be a need. If there's a need, Maybe you're not a contender. Hmm. If there's a want, you are. The the Leafs should be improving on a position that's already solid. Or fill in the gap for an injury because that's a little different, right? Right. Like, who's talking about an addition on defense right now? Assuming assuming everyone comes back healthy. Oh, yeah. I have no notes. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's all right. You don't need to go wasting money and assets. I mean, if you want, you can go out and get a third pair guy, I suppose, but I don't think yeah. you need it. They have a bunch I, of third pairs. <laughs> yeah, I really don't think you need it. It 2 LW. It's yeah. it's the very obvious position of need and I mean, even that Robertson's going to come back. Yarn Croak was fitting into that role really nicely. People forget that. He was finally Fit it, filling into a role really nicely, and then he got hurt. Guys are going to come back. Hopefully, the rest of the team stays healthy. Um, they continue to get saves. The goal scoring, the even goal scoring returns a little bit. I think they should be fine. There's a change afoot in the NHL, and it might be with the NHL schedule, because there's a lot of rumblings around going from 82 games to 84 games on the schedule. So the dumbest thing that's happening in the NHL this season, amongst all of the dumb things, is the Edmonton Oilers and the Calgary Flames play three times all season. They only play three times. That's because of the schedule, the way it's lined out. You alternate every other year, whether you play three games or four games versus your uh, in-division opponents. And this year is a three-time for the Flames and Oilers rivalry series, which we all agree with is not the way it works. It's not so enough. by adding two games, this is how the NHL schedule would work. You play four games versus the other seven teams in your division. You play three versus the other division in your conference, and you play two versus every other team in the other conference. So you play every team at least twice, and that's how the schedule would break out evenly in 84 games. Now to get this done, the NHL PA It sounds like they would also need to get something if the league is going to add two games to the regular season schedule, and that would be a reduction in the preseason. So currently, teams play between six and eight preseason games, depends on how much your organization schedules it. That number would come down to four. So teams would play four preseason games instead of six to eight, and we get an 84-game season. What do you think of this, Steve? I uh, I think Gary Bettman is solving an issue, uh, solving a, a problem that doesn't need to be solved. Like, this is what he wants, right? This is what he does, is he lies to get what he wants. No, no one wants a play-in tournament. We don't need a play-in tournament. What are you guys talking about? And like two days later, we find out he wants an 84-game season, which the NHL used to have, by the way. Mm-hmm. They yeah. did used to have an 84 game season in the early 90s, I think. Around there, yeah. Yeah. So this is what he wants. Uh I don't think it's the greatest idea, but if 
we add two regular season games to a schedule that shaves a significant portion of the preseason off. That's a fair trade, but I think we all agree you can't go beyond 84. Um, man, an, an 84 LFR schedule. I don't know. It's a lot. I don't know. But I just find it. I just find it very funny that this is not only doable but recommended. But the play-in tournament is preposterous. The play-in tournament, like not being a fan of it, is so ridiculous because the best games in sports, in best games in the NHL, are game sevens. So why would you not manufacture more game sevens with a play-in tournament where you just make them single elimination games or three game series? So we all we get is these more game sevens. Like yeah. it's ridiculous that you don't see the money in that and the entertainment factor in that. Cause at the end of the day, you're an entertainment product. My, my thing there is it, it feels fake in a way. Like it feels too manufactured. Do you think, do you think the NBA, it feels fake? No, but no, you don't even have to go to the NBA. <clears throat> the Blue Jays beating the Orioles was friggin' sick. Yeah. That was awesome. Now yeah. they won. So I like it. Mm-hmm. The MLB was the first to do this. And, um, and like, we saw it with the Seattle Mariners in that the oh. road team can come in and win those two games. Like it's not it's not like it's a guarantee for the home team or anything, and the amount of excitement uh, being on the ba- wrong end of it is like it's devastating. Obviously, that was being horrible. a Blue Jays fan, but like that, that was, was manufactured. Horrible. That was yeah. a manufactured series out of really nothing. Like you're playing a a three game series all in in one city to add to the because you're adding to the playoff teams that make it. And the other ones get a buy. Like that's all. That's all. Just they changed it, and it's a new way. And then we get this great this awful moment in Toronto sports history. So, so I don't know why the NHL can't tweak things. We need more hockey that matters. And yeah, regular season hockey matters more than preseason. That trade is fine. Would in wouldn't a play in series be better? Yeah. And do we need to move heaven and earth so that every team plays each other once? Do Minnesota fans go, what? What do you mean the Blue Jackets aren't coming to town? <laughs> and and do Panthers fans go, you know, what do you mean the, the, I don't know, Kings aren't coming to town this year? And I don't think every team needs to see everybody. Hmm. You know, if uh, there were, there were, there were years where Crosby, I think, went three years or something without going to Western Canada. That's ridiculous. Right, but if you got to skip one year, one year, I don't know. I think you'll survive. Yeah, and like I think if if there's any way to reduce the schedule, like if you want every team to go to every building at least one time, then like I think reducing the games versus your other division, uh, in conference division is a place where you can reduce the game. Like that doesn't have to be three times. Maybe that's two. Like maybe you only go there once. You know to the other division in your conference. But like, I don't know. There's some tweaks here in the NHL seems unwilling to make changes unless it's stuff like this, where Gary just gets his extra two regular season games and more revenue. It's not really more fun for the fans. What was he good? He gets more revenue. He gets more revenue. I love when you do your pouty voice. (laughs) (laughs) More revenue. That's my pouty businessman voice. Mm. Yesterday we talked about the Hockey Canada situation and the 2018 World Juniors team. And there's a little bit of news coming out of that because over the weekend, Alex Formanton signed in uh, Sw- uh, Switzerland. So, oh. yes. So, Alex Formanton, who was a member of the 2018 World Junior Team, um, he was under contract. He's still under contract with the Ottawa Senators, but they did not reach an agreement on his RFA deal. So, he's ineligible to play hockey. In the NHL this season, the Ottawa Senators still maintain his rights, though. And if he wants to play next season, he will have to sign a deal with them or they will have to move him. And in the meantime, Alex Formanton announced, along with the club H.C. Ambry Piotta, a Swiss oh. club, 
that this, this happened last week. I didn't even, I didn't see the story at all. Yeah. So uh, I think it's important because we, we did miss it. So I th- think it's important to bring it up that he will be playing for them this season. Steve, are you wow. familiar with this team? Uh, no, I was about to look them up. Um, very interesting. Um, I mean, yeah. risky signing. Um, Unfortunately, you do got to kind of beat around the bush uh, with a story like this, but this is the sort of thing that can blow up in your face pretty fast. For uh, the club, yeah, if he's if he's charged criminally uh, within this investigation, like we're not making assumptions if, here. Yeah, if, it's all uh, we don't we don't know his role in the 2018 um, sexual assault. We we don't know um, if he would be charged or if he's being investigated or anything like that. But he was a member of the club. He did not sign with the Senators. And now he is going to go play in the National League for a Swiss club whose name I probably butchered immensely. Uh, there's two names I definitely recognize. Uh, the first is their goalie, Benjamin Kahn's, who was, I can't believe maybe he's 34 now. I remember him from the World Series. He was part of that Swiss team that upset the Russians. Um, 2011, I think. Can't remember. But also, uh, Formanton, I believe, is playing with a former teammate, Philip Chalapic, who was a uh, once highly touted Sens prospect, who's uh, now with the team. Okay. So yeah, there's a there's a connection there. I think that note was important to get out there as we wait for the rest of the 2018 World Junior slash Hockey Canada story to unfold uh two more notes here steven before we wrap up this broadcast los angeles kings signed trevor moore yeah news over uh i think that happened on friday officially the signing was done uh five-year contract 4.2 million dollars per year if you don't know trevor moore he was traded to the los angeles kings for jack campbell and kyle clifford and what's Trevor Moore's number? Or what was it with the Leafs? I don't know if it's the same with the Kings. Like his, his jersey number? Yeah. Uh, 42? 42. <laughs> Jesus. These fucking hockey guys. Gotta go he he wears 12 now. He wears 12. Oh, now. he wears 12. Okay. Uh, one thing I love about Trevor Moore is that he's a uh, California native. And yep. that the Kings fan have a have a running joke of Thousand Oaks native Trevor Moore, and they always love the fact that he's from Thousand Oaks, uh, California, and Thousand Oaks Trevor Moore. So Why that's not? a lot of fun for a guy who was uh, an undrafted college free agent. I, correct, right? For yeah. to go from that to struggling to find his footing in the Leafs lineup to moving, uh, getting moved to Los Angeles in a in an interesting deal, and then finding like his place on the second line and becoming an everyday player and then earning a $4.2 million contract. It's a quite a quick journey for uh, Trevor Moore uh, yeah. over the course of the last couple of years, really slow start to uh, last season. And then he scored his first goal against the Leafs and he never slowed down after that. He rode, he rode that momentum all the way to a multi-year multi-million dollar uh, contract easy to cheer for i was there for his one playoff goal one playoff point as a toronto maple leaf uh game three 2019 against the boston bruins and i was there uh when he hoisted the calder cup uh, with the toronto marley so were you i was uh, also there yeah i think 17... you were also at game three yes yes we yeah. we all went to game three right yeah yeah but we were sitting separate uh then was i there I might not have been there. I might have only been for the final game. I think you and Adam were sitting together, and oh. I was sitting with, I think, my wife. <laughs> oh. I don't remember. Yeah. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. 17, Easy guy to cheer for. 17 goals last season. Five of them were shorthanded. Wow. Can you believe that? I do. I do. He's, um, you know, you're welcome, LA Kings. Because <laughs> the, the Toronto Marlies, man, they all they do is churn out penalty killers, basically. Yeah. Um. So I'm I'm not surprised by that at all. Feisty you want a, player. You want a little bit of uh. Hey, this is kind of weird. Yeah. Five, always. Five shorthanded goals last season, as I mentioned. Who is he tied with? Is that the league lead? 
Yeah. He's tied for the league lead in shorthanded goals with five. Who is he tied with? Brad Marchand. No, he hasn't been around long enough this year. I don't know. Alex Formanton, who had five shorthanded goals last year. Oh, last year. Yes. Oh. Oh, weird. The Sens wouldn't want to re-sign him. <laughs> it's just uh, it's a weird coincidence that those two Surely. stories are, are right here, right next to each other. Yeah, it's that's very <laughs> odd. Uh, final thing for the day. Um, shout out the 2023 Women's World Championship. It is going to be played in Brampton, Ontario. Let's go. Now it's. It's the first time since 2000 that they're playing the Women's World Championship in the GTA, which I thought, I was like, wow, that's crazy. Um, they, they played last in Canada during the pandemic in Calgary. They played with no fans in there. Um, so that doesn't really count. Uh, Steven, will that, do you think I'm going to be able to get you and Adam out to like a semifinal game, Canada, whoever they're playing, Finland or something? I think so. When is it again? It's in April. I didn't even say that part. April. April this year, the women's okay. World. Only thing that might get in the way is my playoff streaming schedule. How dare you? Already making excuses. But if it doesn't get in the way, uh, I am I am going to say something. Brampton. It's been a hell of a time making hockey work in Brampton. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Why are you shitting on the battalion? I'm not shitting on the battalion. No, but where's where are the battalion right now? I don't know. Not Brampton. Not Brampton. <laughs> North Bay. The the Beast and uh like lots of teams have have gone through there. Brampton. The surrounding area. Get out there. Show up. If you're not if it's not your actual job to stream other games, then you need to show up. I'm putting that on you. I hope they do. I hope, I hope uh, they do too. It's an interesting location. Like, I guess, I guess they want to grow the game in different locations. You know, the the women's game. So you don't go to like Toronto. You know, you go a little outskirts to Brampton, which I think will be fun. I think sometimes it's hard to thrive in Toronto. Um, I always tell the story about my buddy who was in a band, and they they had a really hard time getting into venues in Toronto. And then they went out to the East Coast, and they ran out of merch by the second date. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Brampton, why not? Why not you, Brampton? <laughs> Let's go. If the if the gold medal game is on a Sunday and the Leafs don't play a playoff game that day or whatever, um, I think we gotta get to Canada USA and watch that. The MPP score the golden goal. Oh, Jesse, like what what evidence is there that she's <laughs> capable of doing something like that? <laughs> I don't know. She's never done it. Never, ever. Not unclutch. That's what they say about her. Yeah. It's more like MP who? <laughs> no. Okay. Can't even, can you imagine saying something disparaging about Marie Philippe Lynn? She's incredible. There's no way. Yes. Can't Agreed. say anything. Bad. All right. We're going to wrap it up. We're done. Yes. We're done here for today. We'll be back on Wednesday. We'll see if Adam Wilde can make it, if we can make it to his home, if it's not all sickly uh we'll be in studio again if not then it'll just be the two of us hanging out on zoom yeah adam's doorbell is Is that the purge yep (laughs) i thought i did a good perch it's okay i I got it yeah so yeah i guess it was decent it was good and and us on some more purge noises Steve, the Leafs just traded Dennis Mulligan. We were talking after the show. Are you sure? Like, it's a verified account? Have you, have you heard of the Toronto Maple Leafs Twitter account, Steven? It's, it's verified. You're 100% sure. What are you talking about? Is it verified? It's the Toronto Maple Leafs Twitter account. Well, yeah, but the, the Twitter account stinks. They oh, did it. It's a player on Colorado. Who did they get? Who do you think? Take a guess. I don't know. Nathan uh, McKinnon. 
Yeah, no, seriously. A uh, player from Colorado. Uh, what position do they play? Defense. You're never defense. Defense. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. Forward, 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 forward. Oh, oh, oh. My bad. I was my like, bad. what the hell do they get a defenseman for? <laughs> my bad. Uh, Colorado doesn't have any healthy forwards right now. They traded Who? one for Dennis Mulligan. Who'd they get? Dryden Hunt. Oh, the nerds are big on Dryden Hunt. Dryden Hunt, who currently has one goal and zero assists on the year. Let's go. No, sorry, two goals because he started the year with the uh, New York Rangers where he scored one goal. Oh, wow. He's on his third team. Was he claimed off waivers or something? No, they, they traded him. I don't know. No, 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 no. By Colorado. Oh, to get to oh, from the Rangers. I don't know. I don't have a lot of details on Dryden Hunt. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll read this to you. The Toronto okay. Maple Leafs announced today that the hockey club has acquired forwarder, forward Dryden Hunt from the Colorado Avalanche in exchange for forward Dennis Mulgan. Hunt, 27, has registered 42 points and 14 goals in 193 regular season uh, games over the course of a six-year career with Florida, Arizona, New York, uh, Colorado. In 28 games this season between the Rangers and Avalanche, the Cranbrook, BC native has collected two goals and 15 penalty minutes. He was originally undrafted and signed as a free agent by the Florida Panthers. New Year's Eve will be the battle of Dennis Malgan versus Dryden Hunt. Dude, why? Uh, I can tell you exactly why. Uh, I think this is a case of two teams who are going to place a player on waivers and didn't want to lose them for nothing. And the Leafs trade Malgan, who is not a fit at left wing, uh, for a player who is a left winger. Now, I don't think... Surely... The Leafs will not have Dryden Hunt on the left of Tavares and Marner tomorrow against the Lightning. Why not? Well, that's the thing. Why not? <laughs> I guess. Now, okay. 27 years old, so we're not exactly talking about like a player oozing with potential here. Um, he had an abundance of goal-scoring track record at the minor league level. Uh, he had a 23 goal season in the AHL. That's not bad. And he had a 58 goal season in the WHL at the NHL level. He just hasn't shown this. He had his career high in goal scoring last year with the Rangers with uh, six goals, career high in assists with 11 career high in points with uh, 17. Uh, he is an average sized undrafted left-handed shot and i think this is just the leafs who know they're not going to ever be able to claim anybody off waivers um uh, just acquiring a guy because they know malgan is not a fit he's just not a fit mm -hmm. he had a terrible game uh last game and he's very clearly not it and when the leafs get guys back uh Malgan won't even be in this lineup. Right. He could be interesting for Colorado. Like, I, I think we've seen enough of Dennis Malgan to know that there is skill there. Um, you know, he's a really fun player to watch. Um, but I think he'd be a really fun player to watch for another team. Because I watch him like, Haha, look at him go. Because <laughs> he tries so friggin' hard. Um, but it, the more it goes nowhere, the more you're like, this isn't funny anymore. But the only spot in the Leafs lineup right now is a spot that he's not fit to fill. So we'll see if he can fill it a little better in Colorado and hopefully uh, Dryden Hunt is the answer. You'll be happy to know uh, or interested to know Dryden Hunt at no point played for the Ontario Hockey League or the <laughs> Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. And he's, uh, he's actually a very rare example of a guy who played five seasons in the WHL. Oh, wow. 
how did he pull that off? That's weird. Yeah. I don't know much about this player. I feel like I've seen the nerds talk about him a lot. Mm-hmm. In Jonah Siegel reporting less than a minute ago, Kelly Yarncroke returns to practice today for the Leafs. There. Uh, he took the place of the traded Dennis Mulligan alongside John Tavares and Mitch Marner. So that's very there. clearly what it is. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. That's good. You know, former uh, Ryan Smith hockey on Twitter saying former um, Thunderbirds teammates traded for one another. Springfield Thunderbirds. Dude, this couldn't be a more nothing trade if it tried. I'm sorry. <laughs> it couldn't. Are you going to make a video? Maybe a TikTok. <laughs> no, like the Dennis Mulgan trade doesn't get a video? Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. I need to learn more about it because I don't have a great answer for why this is interesting. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Wanna bet? Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle at Adam W-Y-L-D-E and at Jesse Blake.